how to look rich for a tiny amount of money. Brendan, in today's video, we are talking about four luxury cars that can be had for a tiny amount of money. Yeah, these are cars that are basically the peak of depreciation, right? Cars that were very expensive when brand new, but nowadays you'd be surprised at just how cheap you can get them. Now, should you buy these cars? Are we saying you should buy these cars? We are not saying anything of the such because there's a good shot you buy this old Mercedes S-Class and you end up spending three times the price of the car on repairs. Absolutely, I mean, just think, if you can get this super cheap, it's not gonna mean that you're gonna have super cheap repairs, right? If this is a, let's say, $3,000 car, it's not gonna be $3,000 car repairs because this was pretty expensive and the repair bill, repair bill is going to follow. But anyways, we thought it would be fun to show you just how much car you can get for a couple grand. And this is the first car on our list. So this is a Mercedes-Benz W220 from what year? This is a 2006, so it's the last year of this generation of the S-Class. And I would say this is probably the most hated generation of the S-Classes because it's just kind of dull looking and they kind of softened out the lines a bit. And I think you were mentioning to me before that this is when Mercedes's quality went a little bit down south. Yeah, so the previous S-Class was very overbuilt but Mercedes was losing a lot of money. So they had to start cutting corners here and there. And the W220 is really the S-Class that started that trend. However, it still has some luxury features, starting with the engine, Brendan. Why don't you pop the hood? Sure. Now, they started production of these cars uh, in 1998, and they did have some interesting features, which we'll showcase on the inside, including, check this out, to open up the hood, you pull this little tab there on the grill. But this is a V8. Yeah, it's a 4.3 liter V8 because this is the S430, which means that it puts out about 275 horsepower and about 295 pound-feet of torque. Now, the S-Class came with a myriad of motors. There were motors below this and there were motors above this, but I think this is probably the cheapest V8 you can get in this generation S-Class. We also have 4Matic all-wheel drive, and would you look at this, Brendan, air suspension which Ooh. I'm sure would not be problematic whatsoever. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's sarcasm. But Cole, as you come along the side, this is a big luxury sedan. This is the epitome of Mercedes-Benz luxury. It's got the rare two-tone paint option, rust brown on oxidation, as I like to say. And then as we come to the rear here, we've got these beautiful tail lights, which kind of sculpt to the rear of the body, S430 badging, parking sensors. And check this out, Brandon. Look at this luxury feature. Are you ready? I'm ready. Power opening auto trunk. Automatic trunk, that's cool. And auto closing. Watch your fingers, because this might take your finger off. Look how fast that thing closes. Holy smokes. They sure weren't thinking about safety when they, uh put the speed of the closer in there. And wait till we check out the inside. Brendan, by far the best part of an S-Class is the interior. And this car has a gentle 275,000 miles on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's actually in surprisingly good shape considering the miles, but I'm gonna talk about the back seat features. So let's start here on the door. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a early 2000s Mercedes if you didn't have an ashtray and you do have one that slides out here in the door and what it also reveals is a little cigarette lighter that each door gets their own private cigarette lighter in the back but not only that if you look up you get your own little lighting situation here and a mirror to look at yourself and make sure that you're looking good and then on the center console it does fold down give you a nice squishy padding and if you push this your cup holders come out and you get a little center storage too. Now, Brendan, obviously the seat has a couple tears in it, just a couple, and there are some worn spots on the inside of this car, but let me show you some of the luxury features, starting over here, Cole. Three position memory seats with heating functionality, full power seats, including power headrests. Look at that. And I love the gauges on these W220s. You want to focus on the gauges there. When I turn the car on, they all come into life. And what is truly astonishing to me, Brendan, is there is not a single error light on the dash. Look at that. That is incredible. No. I would never have guessed that just looking at the mileage on this car. No check engine, nothing of the sort. We also have the navigation screen, which was pretty high tech for the early 2000s with satellite radio, the phone number pad over here. And of course we have the dual zone automatic climate control all integrated here in the center of the car. Check this out. Got a little ashtray again, lots of ashtrays. We have a couple of different transmission modes down here. 
And then my favorite feature, Brendan, we've got a lift mode for the suspension. So if you're about to tackle some larger bottles, the Grey Poupon, you can push the button and the suspension will raise. We have multiple shock modes. And then if you want to focus on the back coal, check this out. I can not only take away Brendan's headrests so he is no longer safe in an accident, <laughs> I can also power shade him. Well, here's the thing, Tommy. When I was pulling this up before, it doesn't really lock into place all that well. So I don't know how much it's going to protect me anyways. Maybe, maybe a little broken. <laughs> but apart from the acres of the finest wood across the dash, I think it's time we get this thing on the road and see how the ultimate early 2000s luxury sedan drives. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, I see you have uh, chosen to act as driver today and I have uh, chosen to act as the wealthy businessman that's paying you. I'm closing my soft closed doors as you would expect out of a modern luxury sedan. And you, my friend, really are in the best place in an S-Class. Yeah, I mean, I have acres of legroom back here. These seats are surprisingly comfortable. This center armrest is nice and squishy. And of course, I've got the best driver to take me around this fine parking lot. Now look, these cars, you are right, Brendan, aren't much loved. The, this series of S-Class, the next one's got a little nicer, a little bit more modern. The previous ones are kind of classics now. This one's just an old car. But even still, the level of luxury and comfort and this wafty ride quality, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you're into 20-year-old uh, technology, you this think, is the car for you. You think this is an old man car, don't you? I do. Brendan, <laughs> this is not an old man car. This is for the smart buyer who doesn't care about ownership costs. Um, so not a very smart buyer. Yeah, I would say that doesn't make a smart buyer necessarily. Should we see how this 4.3 liter V8? Sure. Hold on. Whoop. Oh, not fast. Oh, good power up top. Nice. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, it's actually pretty quick and it's very comfortable and very quiet with the double glazed glass functional AC at 275,000 miles. And Brendan, what are these cars selling for? So, I mean, according to KBB, this car, even with this amount of miles, is worth private party about $3,900. Now, I, I think you're gonna have a really hard time finding someone to pay that much for this car. So realistically, I would be able to guess that you'd be able to fetch this for two to three grand. But if you think about it as far as, you know, Ooh, my seatbelt just unbuckled itself. It Tommy. really wants to kill yeah. me this car. <laughs> but if you think about it this way, if you want to go get a good one, right, with like less than 100,000 miles on it, you could easily find these for less than seven grand. Yes, I agree. And it's a lot of car for seven grand, as long as you have seven grand a week to keep it running. <laughs> That's all you need. All right, Brendan, on to the next one. So next up, I bring you none other than the Infiniti QX56. And this, even being a 2011, you'd be just surprised at how affordable you can get this ultimate luxury SUV. And unlike the Mercedes that we looked at, these are pretty reliable. So they have sure. a pretty stout engine because they're Nissan Armada underneath the skin. And what do you think of the design of the, uh, the, the this vehicle? You know, it's certainly polarizing. I think some people would say that it looks kind of like a beluga whale. I actually kind of like it. It's kind of empowering and big and has a presence on the road. I would say it's almost kind of like has the similar presence like a G-Wagon, but on a much lower budget. I would always call these happy hippos. So they have kind of this smiling face with the, the big hump in the front. Look, they're not super attractive cars, but I think they've aged okay. And um, you know, they're not that different from the brand new ones. So from an outside design, they still look pretty bougie. They still look fairly modern, but it's on the inside where things get really interesting. Oh, Brendan's popping the hood. Let's talk about the powertrain. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this giant 5.6 liter V8 that pumps out 400 horsepower and 419 pound feet of torque. So not only is this a giant vehicle, it's a very powerful one to boot. So now hopping into the Infiniti QX56, you will see that you also have acreage of wood here and some chrome-ish looking plastic bits, but it's actually pretty darn nice. If you've sat in a Nissan Armada, it will look very familiar, except it's got a lot of extra accoutrements, as well as this nice little analog clock that of course means you are driving in luxury. And then you do have a proper 
four high and four low, so if you wanted to do some luxurious off-roading, you sure can. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a super budget and reliable Range Rover. And back here, I can recline my seats, put on a DVD in my antiquated DVD player, turn on my automatic climate control, and cruise down the highway. And speaking of which, let's cruise down the parking lot. Brandon, you know, these cars don't get a lot of love, but they are actually extremely good used cars to buy. Very comfortable, very luxurious, heated seats, heated steering wheel, navigation. This thing is pretty loaded. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of these, actually. I've always secretly wanted one. Um, it's just, you know, it, you always feel like when you're buying an Infiniti, you feel like you're driving a car that you're just like, well, I couldn't get the Mercedes. I couldn't get the Lexus. You know, I couldn't quite swing one of those, Ooh. but I did get an Infiniti. That's painful, Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> Look, here's the thing about these cars, right? Is they don't, you're right, they don't have the same brand cachet, but people still respect them, and especially a big three-row SUV does gain a certain level of respect out on the road, and they drive great, and we'll see good power out of that big 5.6-liter naturally aspirated V8. Yeah, let's see how this uh, 400 horsepower does in this big SUV. Oh, good, right? Not bad, yeah, a little bit of a takeoff and a launch there. We didn't test our brakes, so let's test them now. Yeah, they're pretty good, solid brakes. And here's the thing, fuel economy, terrible, mid-teens. Um, Four-wheel drive, excellent, great in the snow, and this one has 219,000 miles on it. Yeah. Feels like a pretty new car in here. Yeah, and I think these are related to the Nissan Patrol that they sold as well in other countries that are actually renowned for their off-road capabilities. And so these share a lot of that DNA and are really good off-road, um, but yeah. It's pretty nice. XM radio, heated seats, heated steering wheel. Um, probably have adaptive cruise, maybe. Uh, this one probably just has a normal cruise. I think you could get it as an option, but this one doesn't have it, unfortunately. But Tommy, do you know what this thing is worth, even with 219,000 miles on it? What do they go for? KBB is saying that this car is only worth $6,100. Wow. This is a lot of car for $6,100. Now, if you want one that's like low mileage out there, talking maybe a hundred thousand miles or a little bit less you can still get these for less than 10 grand Tommy dude this is a steal even at eight nine grand I would be in this thing 100% with these big comfy leather loungers this thing's rad absolutely and you feel like a boss driving down the road and Brendan now for an Alfa Romeo a car that just oozes sex appeal and sportiness this is a 2018 Stelvio but not just any Stelvio yeah this is the TI Sport which means that you get paddle shifters on the inside, upgraded suspension, and a few extra uh, goodiness, goody, good, uh, a rear differential, uh, you get a rear limited, slip, limited dip. slip differential <laughs> as well as sporty suspension. And yeah, I think it's living its Italian dream, right? Uh oh, Roman's coming in. <laughs> oh, just hello, Steve. LSD. LSD, there we go. But let's Thanks. talk about the Stelvio. When this car was new, Five years ago, $50,000. As spec, this is probably closer to like 54 grand. Yeah. Now you can pick up cars just like this one with similar miles, $23,000, $24,000. In some cases, as low as 22 grand. That's a lot of car for a small amount of that money. That is a lot of car. When you're thinking about an Italian exotic sporty car, which this is, even though it's an SUV, you can get one for the low 20s. What a bargain. Why don't you pop the hood? We'll talk about these wheels. I love these wheels. These kind of phone dial wheels with the red brake calipers, a 19 inch wheel. Very, very cool. I mean, look, this is not the quadrifolio. This is not the, the, the four cheese version, but it is, um, it is still a little high performance. Ooh, look at this. We got some, uh, we got a hot air intake in there. We got yeah. a strut bar. Well, I like the added red goodness on there too. Add to the spiciness. It goes well with that Alfa Romeo badge on the hood, but this is their two liter four cylinder turbo engine. And what kind of power did this put out, Tommy? Right about 280 horsepower uh, through all wheel drive, of course. So pretty spicy powertrain, but Brendan, let's check out the interior, see if it's any good. Yeah. Now, Brendan, as we look at the front of this vehicle, check this out. These deep set bucket seats with the Alfa Romeo badge there on the headrest really looks premium. And then we also have this beautiful steering wheel with the start button located there in the steering wheel. Deep set dials, which just scream Alfa Romeo in the way that they look. Um, 
I mean, just a beautiful kind of dash layout. Now, it's not like super luxe like the previous ones, like the dash design's not super cheap. The dials here are not super cheap, but it's it still is a nice interior, very comfortable. And how is the rear seat room? You know, the rear seat room is, I would say, Okay, I'm only about five foot nine, and my knees are a few inches away from hitting the back of Tommy's seat here, so I could spend some time in this, but I wouldn't want to spend a super long time. I do get a nice little center armrest with some cup holders. I do have my own beautifully styled Italian vents here in the back. And then the other thing I do like is up above, that sunroof comes all the way back, so even I have my own little glass roof to look out of. Hey, Brendan, here's the thing. This interior is by far the most modern of the three we've looked at. Sure. And not that different than a brand new Stelvio. So it's actually pretty nice in here, pretty luxury and comfort, comfortable and very sporty. I mean, think about it this way. You get basically a brand new type of Stelvio for half the price, but double the problems. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's, uh, that's Brendan's top tick tip of the day. Half the price, double the problems. All right, Brendan. Now, the Stelvio is a much more sporty, higher performance driving experience than like a BMW or a, uh, a Mercedes in the same competitive class. Now, what is your first impression? Well, uh, considering my seat is kind of, you know, gangster leaning back and I can't move it up, it's a little concerning. It's a but little broken. That's, you know, that's, that's a minor issue, right? Just getting a seat control fixed and considering this, the price. This yeah. particular engine is making some kind of alarming sound for 67,000 miles. So I might, I might want to find one of these with perhaps an extended warranty. Yeah, I think that would be good consumer advice, certainly if you're getting a, an older Italian vehicle. Okay, should we floor it? Yeah, let's see what this, guy, this thing's got. Come on, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey. Goes pretty good. That's pretty peppy. Yeah, and you've got this great steering with these fantastic, oh, my, my Google Maps is going. Great <laughs> steering with these fantastic paddle shifters that extend well above where you'd expect them. They're attached to the column so they never move. Um, so we got sport modes in this thing, DNA, worst infotainment system I think on the market in these Stelvios. Yeah and I will say with the sunroof cover open it's kind of making it so you can almost barely see the uh, infotainment screen and then the other thing is too I'm a little bit wider of a gentleman and these seats are just just a smidgen too narrow for for my body type so if you're you know a wider person just be aware of that when buying these. They're Italian seats I'll give you that but yeah. for the money Brendan these are great cars but of the three which one was your favorite? Oh, the Infinity, hands down. You get the reliability, you get the comfort, you get the ability to tow with it and use it as a utility vehicle. For me, it's gotta be the Mercedes for under a couple thousand dollars. Great value <laughs> before problems, but that that's just my choice. But guys, let us know what you think in the comment section. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you in another episode. Take care.